It's Beard O'Clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a three-way collaboration. This beer is called Three-Way Action Double IPA brewed with Vic Secret Galaxy and Mosaic. It's 9% ABV and it's been brewed with three different Welsh brewers, Tembi Brewing Company, Crafty Devil and Heavy Industry. And to be honest with you, I'd like to see more of this in Wales. There's a lot of traditional breweries in Wales. Just take Evan Evans down in Landilo, the Simon Buckley beers. I think, you know, there's a lot of tradition going on. I like the tradition, but I just think people like Simon Buckley and Evan Evans should be brewing more stuff like this. Your triple IPAs, your double IPAs at 9% ABV with your new world hops. Let's get it out into a glass and see what we get. Look at the carbonation on the beer. Fabulous stuff. The beer was kindly sent to us by imperialbeerclub.com. They've now got their own online beer website where you can pick beers. It used to be a club where you paid it was £42 a month and you got 10 beers which you didn't know what were coming each month so it was a bit of a it was a bit like Christmas every month coming to you but now if you want to choose it's up to you you can choose which I think I think is a good thing because I've had a little look at the website and there's some pretty decent stuff on there which you may want to kind of just pick and pay your £7.50 delivery charge and job done the link is in the description box of the video for the website imperialbeerclub.com let's have a look at this wonderful wonderful beer we'll get onto the subject of traditional welsh brewers and how they they should probably maybe up their game a little later on but let's look at the new world the fresh welsh brewers that are out there who are taking wales by storm one finger Whitehead, good levels of carbonation, slightly hazy beer. Look at this wonderful, wonderful hazy beer. Some of these traditional brewers in Wales, if they had a hazy beer, they would shake their heads like this. They would shake their heads and it would be, it would be a terrible thing that you produced a hazy beer, but not the new world, not the young funky brewers in Wales who know what they're doing. This beer is young, it's trendy, it's fresh. This is this is stuff of dreams. This is this is stuff of utmost caliber and well just look at it. It's a hazy beer. You old brewers in your 50s, maybe early 60s, don't be frightened. Take on the new world. It'll earn you a lot of money. Aroma on this slightly hazy amber beer. Oh, ho, ho, boom! And it's chocked full of new world hops. It's juicy. It's fresh. It's lovely. There's a little element of sweetness in there coming from the malt. Let's dive into this beer then. And would you believe it? Stone the Crows! Stone the Crows, what a beer! It's beautiful! It's not overly bitter. It's full of hops. It's getting close to a new world. A new world. Double IPA. Very close. In fact... Let's break this down. Let's be a little bit sensible. Let's break it down. What am I getting? Lots of flavour. And they've managed to kind of drop the bitterness on the back end. Biscuity malts. Touch of spice. Orange peel lemon peel, fleshy blood orange, grapefruit, 
you would not believe that the beer was 9% ABV. There's just so much flavor coming from the hops and the, and the malt that it's just overriding that 9% ABV. And again, let's take it up a level. It, some traditional brewers in Wales, some down in West Wales, they'd be thinking, why would you produce a beer at 9%? He'd be rocking on his leather chair in his office, rocking, literally he'd have his hands on his chair, rocking back and forth like this. Why would you produce a 9%? Where could you produce a 9% beer? Why would you want to drink a 9% ABV beer? I have been in that very office. I have sat in that very office with that very person and that person just cannot get his head round. New World Beers. It's not about anymore. It's not about. And I suppose Am I angry with Welsh brewing? No. This is not the message. I know that people around the world are wondering, they're scratching their heads thinking, what am I watching here? Let me try and make it, let me try and break it down. There's two different sides to Welsh brewing. There's your young, your funky, your fresh, know what we're talking about, on the cusp, understanding where the beer world is going. And then you have your kind of older school brewers who produce four to five percent brown beer that they think that people still want to drink seven pints of. Then days are gone. Then days are gone. There are no more coal mines in Wales. Gone are the days where you went to the steelwork, you went to the coal mine, you dug coal all day, and you maybe, maybe like my grandfather did, he, he, he cut the, the blooming steam trains apart for, in, in, in leathers and, and a big helmet all day in the middle of summer. And the first thing, because he used to tell me what he did, the first thing he did when he took his helmet off and he stripped all that leather, leather kind of welding gear off was to, was to ride his bicycle to the nearest pub off the Barry docks and the first three pints never touch the sides. I totally understand that. I totally understand that because it was refreshment. You were thirsty. You needed it. You did a bloody nine hour, ten hour slog of a day and you needed to refresh yourself. But the, in Wales and, and certainly probably everywhere else in the world now, most parts of the world, it's not like that anymore. The days are gone. And there's some brewers in Wales who are still, they're still producing these 4% beers, these 4.5% these beers, which they think that people are finishing work and they want to go to the pub and they want to drink seven pints of this stuff. When you've been sitting in a chair, maybe all day, moving your mouse like this. And that's the most exercise you get all day. And that's the most sweat you break up all day. The days are gone. Them days are gone. They're finished. I certainly don't want to go to a pub and drink five, six, seven pints. I like a session. But I'm sorry, the days are gone. Them days are gone. This is where it is now. You've moved your mouse like that. You've been like that on your mouse all day. Looking at a, t looking at a screen like that all day. Look at the spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets. Don't get me onto Excel spreadsheets. Urgh! Excel spreadsheets like that. Instead of, instead of doing a five day week, you do a four day week and you spend one day in front of Excel on your computer. Uh, yeah, I know all about that. I know all about that as well. Um, and you're moving your mouse like this all day long. And then, and then you finish work and you go, I don't need to go to the pub and drink nine pints. I need to go home de-stress because I've been using this noggin all day, go home and drink something that's 9% ABV and I can forget about the world. I can forget about that crap day I just had looking at a screen all day.
this started out as a as a legitimate beer review it still is a legitimate beer review I promise you <laughs> let's pull some flavors let's rate it and let's then try and further move on to what I was talking about what a wonderful beer what a wonderful wonderful hazy beer Full of flavour, tropical flavours, pineapple, grapefruit, lemon peel, orange peel, fleshy blood orange, hoppy, not too bitter on the back end. And they've probably, probably used Vermont yeast. They've used, probably used Vermont yeast in this beer to not make the beer flavoursome from the yeast at all. The yeast is just a platform. The yeast is just putting the beer up onto a platform and saying let's produce the alcohol and let's pull back. Let's not have any say on flavour. So it's produced the alcohol. It's produced the flavour. That beautiful citrusy, grapefruity, mango, punchy flavours. It's 9% ABV. Let's rate it and let's go deeper into what I'm talking about. A lot of you might have got it. A lot of you might have kind of picked up on where I'm going with this. Because we are in a transitional phase of, of, of world brewing. Not just British brewing, not just Welsh brewing. This is a world thing. And the sooner these people, these old dinosaurs, the, 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 the sooner these dinosaurs understand where we're going with brewing, the sooner they might just wake up before they go bust. Look at the lacing, look at that beautiful lacing in the glass. Look at the way the beer looks, look at that, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Let's rate it. Tembi Brewing Company. Crafty Devil and Heavy Industry Brewing Company have produced a monumental, monumental double IPA that I'm going to rate at 9% ABV. Biscuity, malty, bready, nicely hazed, good levels of carbonation and a massive, massive hop kick on the back end without the bitterness. It's all flavour. I'm going to rate this three-way action double IPA. 9 out of 10. It's a 9 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. If you want to carry on listening, carry on. Carry on watching. I've given my rating. If you want to stop listening to this rant, turn off your computers or your TVs or your mobile phones right now. But let's move on. I manage a pub. I manage a pub in Wales. And it's... It's remarkable, absolutely remarkable that you, you find that the people who you're serving beer to have no idea. They have no clue. No clue about beer. I've been to Belgium. You will not fleece the Belgians. The, the Belgian people who drink beer know their beer. They don't mind drinking hazy beer. They don't mind drinking drinking beers at 9% ABV because they've got the knowledge. They've got this up here. It's very unfortunate. Where I work, you might get you might get somebody going down into the cellar and accidentally knocking a cask. Not knocking it over, but just giving it a slight nudge by accident. That then beer becomes hazy. And you go back you go back upstairs or the person comes back upstairs who's knocked into the cask. Sometimes it's me. I, I'm I'm the manager. It, it happens. We've got a tight cellar. There's there's barrels everywhere. There's nines everywhere. There's barrels everywhere. And you just knock into a barrel. It happens. The customer then who orders the beer. You pour it out and it's not crystal clear. Oh my god, it's like the it's like the fucking world's ended. 
It's like the world's ended. They got a hazy bit. Oh, burp, burp. Like, burp, burp, burp. They've had five pints. Burp, 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 burp. Oh, my beer's hazy. Oh, my beer's hazy. You know, the old camera guys. Oh, burp, burp. Hazy beer. Burp. And you're thinking to yourself, what the fuck? You don't, you know nothing. You know nothing, Jon Snow. You know nothing about beer. And you're telling me, you're standing on the other side of the bar, you've paid your, your pittance, you've paid your £3.50 for your beer, and you want some clear glassed, crappy, malty, 4% beer. And it angers me. I'm like that. Because you've got to put a smile on. As the manager in the pub, you got to do this. you got to bat your eyes and you got to smile. You go, okay, sir, would you like to try another one? The, one the, the other one I didn't got to knock into in the cellar. Would you like that crystal clear, multi, 4% pile of shit? And... It's just, it's beyond, it's beyond that. The other day, well just two days ago, I sold out of, of cans, literally we're serving cans now. I, I sold out of cans of Guinness. So the idea is, right, for your moron, for your fucking moron, they want a can of Guinness you open it flat, you pour it in nice and gently into your freezing cold, it's been in the fridge, cold Guinness in a can, cold glass, you pour it out into your glass, frosty cold glass, then you put it on this stupid mechanism and then you press this surger button and when you press this surger button it sends fucking sound waves or something through this beer, through this Guinness. And then, and then you, and then you hear these morons in their mind when they bought it. You can hear them going, dum 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 dum. You know that stupid horse advert with the Guinness running for the water. You can fucking see them. You can fucking. And I never swear on my beer reviews, and I'm very sorry, but I did cut the beer review off earlier on. If you're still watching and you're, you're upset that I'm swearing, then 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 it's up to you. You can carry on watching, or you can clear off. Um, but you can hear these daft fuckers in their head listening to that fucking Guinness thing. Dum, 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 dum. And I'm getting fucking pissed off now. Anyway, um, and, and this thing kind of surges up. The, the sound wave goes through it. And, and, and before all of that, before all of that, I'm thinking to myself, you are drinking probably a 50 pence can of fucking Guinness and you're paying stupid amounts of fucking money for it. So anyway, this guy, this guy that comes in, uh, he says to me, my Guinness has not been in the fridge long enough. It, it, it's not freezing cold. You know something, he said. I know a lot about Guinness, he said to me. And he said, when Guinness warms up a little bit, when it's not freezing cold, it tastes like shit, he said. And he said this to me, and I'm thinking to myself, and I'm still doing this. I'm still doing that to him. I'm still, I, I, I've got to put on that manager's smiley fucking face, you know? And I'm thinking, you're a fucking twat. You're a complete and utter fucking twat. Um, so, <sighs> he wants his money back. He's not got a freezing can. He's not got a freezing cold can of Guinness that's gone on a stupid machine and I pushed a button and, it, and it's fucking carbonated up and he wants his fucking money back. And I'm thinking to my, and he said, mm, there's no more, there's no more beers that I like in here. Um, I don't know what to have. And I said, oh, you know, try this, try this Kelp Champagne Ale. You might, you might like this. Even though this Kelp Champagne Ale that, was meant to be brewed with champagne yeast, has been brewed with some other kind of yeast, and it's not it's not carbonated at all. 
So he, so anyway, he, he drink, he has a little sample of this beer, and he goes, and it's not about, it's not about flavour. It's not about does he like the beer. It's all about does he like, can he, can he tolerate the beer enough that he can go back down and sit with his friends and and talk bullshit about the world. That's another story. Going back to this is probably the longest beer review I think I've ever done. And this, this might take about four days to upload to YouTube. But I want to carry on. I want to carry on because I've built up a, a certain amount of frustration over the last few months for Welsh brewing, traditional Welsh brewers, and the terrific amount of people in, in, in Wales who, who simply know nothing, absolutely nothing about beer. And I feel like, I kind of feel like, sometimes I feel like really, really alone with this. I feel I feel like I'm the only man on an island with my good beer and and whoever I talk to around me simply has got no clue. They've got no clue. They've got no idea about beer and, and it's just it's it's tremendously, tremendously it's heartbreaking really because because you go to France. Let's let's go to France. And let's go back to this 9% beer for a moment. If I open this up to my father, I'm pretty sure you won't mind me saying this. If I open that 9% beer up to my father, pour it in a glass, and I said, yeah, Dad, have a drink of that. He'd have a, he'd have a fucking fit. He would have a fucking fit. can't drink a beer at nine percent and then he would sit back in his chair and he'd drink a 13 percent wine and I think how why have we got this far how how are we even still drinking beer we've got no knowledge I'm not, I'm not just picking on my father, my, my, I'm picking on my father because my father, he's a tough nut, he won't mind that I'm standing here talking about his drinking habits. But, <sighs> the French would probably know the grape, or most French people would know the grape. They would know the style, the soil, the grape we've grown in, because they got a passion for it, they got a knowledge for it, and the fact that they don't mind drinking a 13% glass of, of alcoholic beverage, which is basically what, what we're all doing. So, to your Evan Evanses, to your Buckleys, to your, to your, to your traditional Welsh family fucking brewers. Wake up. Wake up to the new world. Enjoy your beer. I don't want to drink seven pints of 4% beer anymore. I don't want to listen to people who are unknowledgeable who are changing their Guinnesses because it's not freezing cold. I don't want to listen to you anymore. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. See these back teeth here? I'm fed up to the back teeth of, of listening to you people. You people who have had maybe 250 years of family brewing behind you, yet you know nothing about beer. I am fed up of listening to you. I am fed up of listening to, to people, to customers who do not know nothing about beer telling me what I should be drinking. And I'm fed up of people 
who anything over six percent ABV think beer is 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 the fucking devil's devil's piss. I'm fucking sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. Everybody, take note. This is the new world. This is where we're going. Cheers.